And um, I, once again, I used to frequently um, visit the uh, Kendi Public Library. And one day I was in the library and I met a man who was one of the librarians there. And we had a very long and interesting talk. And that led to us becoming friends, and meeting often, and talking about Buddhism. And this man happened to be, his name was Godwin Samararatna. And he was quite well known in the city also as a particularly pious and lovely person, as indeed he was. And we became very good friends. Um, and then things were happening on the other side of town near the university. And um, some years before, there had been a student's revolution, which young university monks were involved in. So the temple, in the, the, the monastery, in the grounds of the university had been raided by the army. The monks had been arrested. It, it, it was not a good situation. And uh, so for, since 1971, there was no, there were no monks in the university. There was no Buddhist presence in Peridinia University. So uh, Godwin uh, knew people there who were concerned about this. They said the students should have somewhere where they can go and talk to a monk or mm, do some meditation or just sit in quiet when they need, uh, need to rest. And so um, he put me in touch with people at the university and eventually I was uh, invited to become the head of the university Sangharam. Um, and so I moved out of the temple in Kandy City where I was staying and into the uh, university, well they called it the University Buddhist Center. It wasn't really a Sangharam because there was only one monk there myself. Um, and that was a really wonderful thing. It put me in touch with some of the Buddhist scholars at the university. The university library was really very good. The university campus was very beautiful. It's, it's set in a garden setting. Um, what soon became clear, however, was that um, almost no students were interested in Buddhism. And in fact, in the four or five years I was there, only one student <laughs> ever came to the... They were interested in politics and passing their exams and getting a girlfriend or a boyfriend. They were not interested in, in, in Buddhism. However, a lot of the... or, or some of the um, lecturers at the university were interested, including some of the quite important ones. One of them, for example, was Professor Lily De Silva, who took me under her arm and taught me more Pali. And there were quite a few others, I won't name them. And so they started coming to the, the Buddha centers. It was on Tuesdays and on Fridays. We would meet together. And every Tuesday, 10 or 15 of us uh, would meet together and we would discuss one particular sutta. So uh, Lily de Silva would read out the Pali and give the Pali mm, interpretation of these things. And then others, another one like Professor Padma um, Parakram Fernando, who was quite a thinker in his own right, he would look at di different aspects of the philosophy that was within that sutta and, and then we would discuss it. It was a time very fruitful for me people who knew Dhamma at a much deeper level than I had known up till then. So I had access to them and I was the center of it. And then on uh, Friday evenings we would meet and there would be no talks. We would meditate together for an hour and then have a cup of tea and a brief discussion afterwards. And this went for quite some time. And then occasionally there would be international visitors to the university. And if they had an interest in or some knowledge of philosophy or of, of Buddhism, we would invite them. And we had some very, very good um, uh, visitors. One of them was uh, Professor Richard Gombridge. That's when I, where I first met him. Um, uh, 
David Kalupana came sometimes. Once we had a, uh, a visit from the famous honest to God theologian Robinson, who had written a book some years previously which had created quite a sensation in Christian circles. He and his wife came and we had a most interesting discussion with him. So it was a, a time when I, who was, I was basically a nobody. <laughs> Until a few years ago, nobody's even heard of me. <laughs> and now I was the center of a very lively, interesting and, uh, and, and very fruitful intellectual circle. It was, it was great. Anyway, <clears throat> one day, a man came along and um, he was a well-known businessman in the city, quite wealthy. He had a tea estate, was considered one of the better estates in the country. And he was the only person outside the university who ever came, he came with his wife. And he just said, look, I want to, I heard about your group, meditating. I've always wanted to learn meditation. Can I join? And so he did. His name was Mr. Alakon, and he was um, well known for also was a pretty tough guy, what you call in Sri Lanka a mudalali, a, a, um, I, I, I suspect that he done a lot of not very nice things on his way to becoming a wealthy person. So he became one of our um, group and uh, he became a very dedicated meditator, both he and his wife. So that was the situation and during that time I was there I would do out trips to the ancient cities, I went to various meditation centers, Aranyas, I got to know the country very well. At uh, one point, uh, the, there was an American monk joined our group. He turned up in Kandy and lived there for a few few months. Very interesting character. And and because in India I'd done a great deal of walking, walking here, walking there, etc., he was interested in that sort of thing too. So we had this mm, another harebrained scheme. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you did all that walking in India, why wouldn't you do something like that in Sri Lanka? I said, yeah, I'd be in that. And he said, why don't we walk around Sri Lanka? It's not very big. I said, I think that's a good idea. So we decided together to walk all the way around Sri Lanka. <laughs> I mean, you'd have to be crazy. <laughs> anyway, that's what we decided to do. So it's a long story, but basically we set, up from, set off from Colombo, walking along the coast, walking along the beach. In, on the south coast of Sri Lanka, the railway line follows the beach quite closely. Sometimes we'd walk along the railway lines. And everywhere we went, we attracted great attention. People always accommodated us. We were welcome in various temples that we went to. Sometimes we slept in the, on the side of the road or on the beach when it was pleasantly warm. We went for arms gathering the whole time. And we had an absolutely wonderful time meeting the people and seeing how they lived and interacting with them.